Hi there, welcome to the new video. Today I'll be talking about this paper, which is titled as Realm, Retrieval Augmented Language Model Pre-Training. This is from researchers from Google Research. So as we can see in the title, they are talking something around language model pre-training, where often like most of the systems have an idea of self-supervised pre-training scheme, where for models such as BERT, T5, and all of these models, a common pattern that is seen how they train their models is let's say you have a sentence S that has these K number of words. So you would randomly mask a couple of words, let's say this and this. So in the case of BERT, you'll mask words, whereas for T5, Pegasus, all of that stuff, you usually mask word spans. So let's say you have all of these things masked, and at the output end, you basically predict all these words. And this is done based on all the words that occur to its context, and this is done via self-attention. So yeah, this is the general paradigm that is followed by most of these state-of-the-art models. So now in this paper, they propose something on top of this that has a newer component called Retriever. Okay, so the earlier typical pre-training schemes, as in let's say you have a paragraph as we discussed earlier, and you would let's say mask this, 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 and this. So this entire paragraph would go to the let's say BERT model. And for predicting this, the model would have seen all the words that would have occurred in its context. And let's say it predicts the word W1. And if you visualize these attention weights, you'll find, let's say, this was a segment where model majorly focused. And similarly for W2, this was the major segment that model focused on. So in this paper, authors propose another model called Retriever, where the task is to extract the sentences that contain these important segments and use only those things to predict this thing, rather than confusing the model by providing in the entire large context. And similarly for W2 prediction, we would want this sentence to be extracted as a part of Retriever, for it to better supervise the model for predicting this W2 token. So yeah, this is the entire idea of what they propose in this paper. So let's see in the diagram. So let's say this is the unlabeled text that you have. Let's call it as X and we mask one of the words in this and this is that word. Now this goes into the knowledge retriever part that takes in the entire corpus Z and the task of the retriever model is to learn this theta parameters so efficiently that if I give this input document X, the model should be able to output a single document Z from this corpus of capital Z, which is most relevant to this input document X. So out of all the Z's that you have, this is that one document which will supervise most in making the prediction to the mass token that X has. So once this is done efficiently and you get this retrieved document, you concatenate this retrieved document with the original text that you had using the separator token, and now you have a pair of X and Z. So from here on, now it acts as a typical language model while doing the prediction. So they call this model as knowledge augmented encoder that is again learnable and has parameters phi that would take in the original document X, the retrieved document Z, and will try to predict what should be the mass token, that is Y. And here it does that, and based on the loss that you calculate, as per how accurate you were in predicting this mass token or not, you would backpropagate this loss and train this encoder parameters as well as the retriever parameters. So the intuition for training both the models over here is that if the encoder is not trained properly but we have a retriever that is trained very properly, which means this Z document what we get is pretty apt for this X, but somehow the encoder was not able to figure out what has to be filled for the value of Y for this mask. So that is why we have a loss for this. But for retriever, if you see, if the Z document was not good enough for this X, then clearly even if you have a good encoder, you might not make a good prediction. So this retriever loss basically focuses on that, that if I have an input document X, I should be good enough to predict the document Z that supervises the value of mass token in this. So yeah, that's the entire idea. Now let's move forward and see the retriever and the encoder part in detail. So Realm decomposes P of Y given X in two steps. The first one is the retrieve part and then you have predict. So let's say if the input document is X, which was the unlabeled document that you saw. And from the knowledge corpus of capital Z, we retrieve a couple of helpful documents. Let's call it as small z. So the first distribution that you want to learn is P of Z given X. This is for the retriever. And once I have gotten this Z, I want to use this along with the input document that I have and want to predict what should be the value of the mass token. So these are again two components that we want to train. So we can decompose the entire thing using these two models that averages over all the documents that we have in a corpus. So in this, if you see, this is the encoder part and this is the retriever part. Okay. So talking about the retriever part first, they define this as an inner dot product model, where let's say you have a model M that works for input, 
that takes in the document x and outputs the embedding for this. Let's call it as ex. And then you have another model mdoc that takes in a document z, which is from capital Z set and outputs another embedding. Let's call it as ez, which is this one and this one. You call it as function f that takes in x and z and then you pass it to a softmax function to get a probability distribution from 0 to 1 for every document z. So this way you will have high probability z documents and low probability z documents for this input document x. So here the parameters that you learn are associated with m input as well as m document. Then I think they also learn a projection matrix. Yeah, this one. So each of this embedding model is nothing but based out of BERT wherein for the input document that you have, you first pre-process it by adding in the separator and the CLS token. Then you pass it through the BERT model you take the CLS embedding vector and then you multiply with the projection matrix W input to kind of reduce the dimension from 768 to something less. And similarly, the other model, which is embed doc Z, that takes in two things. First is the Z title and then the Z body. So title is associated with the title of the document Z. So this is again to maximize all of the information that you have. So you do the pre-processing for this. For this, they join both of these with a separator token. So this is how typically the NSP thing was created in BERT. And then you pass this entire sequence through the BERT model, get the CLS vector, and again pass it through a different matrix, which is WDOC, to project it again in a lower dimension space. So this way you get both the embedding vectors, and then you have the softmax function. So the theta parameters that the authors talk about for this retriever component basically encapsulate learning W input, WDOC, bird input and bird doc okay so yeah that was about the retriever component now talking about the knowledge augmented encoder so in this as we have seen earlier you basically learn a distribution of predicting y values given x and z where you concatenate both of these sequence and then feed it to the transformer model and then projecting the cls vector space into some lower dimension and then getting the embedding vector so they showcase this for mass language modeling and question answering task. So for MLM, if you see, you'll have the same loss based on the number of mass tokens that you have in the sequence X. And overall, you'll get a softmax distribution across every Y value that you predict that is there in the input token. So yeah, that is a typical way of doing the MLM. Now talking about the open QA. So with MLM, you have already now pre-trained your model. And now your model has already learned theta and phi parameters, which means you'll give an input X it would know like which is the most relevant document. It will retrieve that, concatenate it, format it, and pass it through the phi model to get that word value which was masked. So once this pre-training is done, now we talk about the fine tuning stage. And that's one of the tasks that we have is open domain question answering. So for now, we'll assume like the answer can be found as a contiguous sequence of tokens, and it is not bifurcated across the entire space. And let's say this is the answer span that matches in the retrieved document Z. So here, if you want to define this probability distribution of getting the Y value, which is the answer span is defined as this, where you take a softmax across all the spans that you have, and then put the softmax is nothing but the output from the multi-layer perceptron unit that takes in a representation for the start and end span tokens. And the way you would get start and end tokens is by formatting this by making a single sequence, passing through the BERT model, getting the embedding representation for the start token, and that is your edge start. And similarly for the end, you concatenate both of them, pass it through the BERT model and get the end representation, which you put it as H and S. So yeah, the idea is again same. Here again during the fine tuning stage, you tune your phi model, which is the retriever, as well as the theta model, which is the knowledge augmenter. So if you see this diagram, this is again the pre-training stage of the MLM. You have an input document from some corpus, you pass it through the retriever model that retrieves a relevant document Z over here. You concatenate the actual text that you get and the actual retrieved document. So we're not talking about embedding representation over here. That is already taken care while you are doing this retriever part. But after you're done selecting, you play around with the actual text that you have. You concatenate these two values, do a proper formatting and pass it through the encoder model, which finally predicts what value has to be there in the mass space. So once this training is done in a self-supervised fashion because this again y is something that you already knew so that way you're creating y labels based on the input types that you have so that way it's self-supervised so once this is done we move to the fine-tuning stage which currently is open domain question answering wherein let's say this is the input query that you have and now you have the answer for this as well 
which is again the signal which you'll use against which you calculate the loss to do the back propagation to adjust the weights. You pass this input query to the retriever model. It retrieves the support in document Z. You again format both of these things, pass it via encoder. And finally, let's say it extracts a span for which you calculate the loss because you already have a supervised data. And based on the loss that you incur, you tune this phi model as well as the theta model to improve the conditions that if you had the correct Z value, then the encoder should perform optimally. And for theta, it's like, do you have the correct Z value at the first place or not? So both of these parameters are trained. Okay, moving forward. So as a part of both pre-training and fine-tuning, since we want to maximize this likelihood, which is given the value of X, which is the input document, we want to know the answer for that. And that answer could be in a supervised fashion, which is the QA model, or it could be self-supervised, which is the MLM loss. And since the authors kind of break this problem as a part of two components, the first is the knowledge retriever, and then you have the knowledge augmented encoder, and both have the parameters theta and phi and are differentiable. Hence, the loss that you calculate over here can be backpropagated for this as well as for this. So that way it's fine. But there's a problem in training this theta model, which is the retriever part. Because if you remember the equation, it goes something like this. You have to marginalize over all the documents that you have in the input corpus Z, which means the retriever has to calculate this dot product for the input document X and all the documents that you have in the Z, which is going to consume a lot of time. So now the challenge is how do we optimize this? So one of the ways is to kind of approximate, like instead of summing over the entire documents that we have, we just do a summation over top K documents because we are likely to get a skewed as well as spike distribution, which means only few of the documents will have high probability values and rest all of them will kind of tend to zero. So that way making an assumption of just dealing with top K documents looks fair. But even with that approximation, we still need an efficient way to find these top K documents. So for this, they utilize maximum error product search algorithms that are specially designed for this task and can help us out in approximating these top K documents efficiently. So one of the requirements for these algorithms to work efficiently is to like you have to pre-compute the most expensive step and have it stored as an index. So if you see in this case, X would be computed just once and then you have like Z values, let's say 1, 2, M wherein M is total number of documents that you have in capital Z corpus. So instead of looping over this again and again for every new value of X, we use embed doc model and pre-compute embeddings for each of these documents and index them. And now for every new X value that we get, we just call embed X method and pass the query function and directly perform the dot product with all the stored values that we have. But here, if you notice, the embed doc function is not a static function. It is again a learned function which means after the back propagation step is done, you will be updating the theta parameters for this model as well, which means now the embedding vector for the same document will change because the model has essentially updated. So to keep up to that and not use the stale index even after the update is done, is that they asynchronously refresh these embeddings and re-index all the documents again after a certain number of training steps. Okay, so if you see this diagram, so let's say the initial model had theta one parameters, and we indexed all of these documents. We use this to calculate the dot product and trained our MLM model. Now we back propagate and update the weights from theta one to theta two, let's say. Whenever this update happens, we again build the index with newer parameters of theta two and again re-index this document. We again use the MLM index for getting the top K documents for training the MLM trainer. And again, we update the parameters. Again, we update. So this cycle kind of continues and all of this is happening asynchronously. So yeah, this looks like a pretty reasonable solution to this. Okay. And then they delve further and try to give the intuition to what exactly retriever is learning. So if you see this equation, so if we take the gradient of this likelihood with respect to the retriever part, where f of x comma z is nothing but the dot product and r of z is nothing but a scaling factor, which kind of decides the direction in which the gradient should flow. And then you marginalize over all the z values that you have where Z is nothing but top K documents now, which we have seen earlier based on the MIPS algorithm that they calculate. So if we further analyze this RZ term, we can see like it has a ratio. So if the upper term of this is greater than the denominator, which means this value is greater than one. If you subtract one from this, which means this entire value would be greater than zero. Essentially it would be positive. Whereas in the case of numerator is less than denominator, you will have this entire ratio to be less than one resulting in this entire value to be negative. So the value of this entire thing is greater than zero. 
if the document that you have found out, which is the Z, is kind of supporting the input value X for getting the value Y. Then in that case, only the numerator is going to be greater than denominator. But if the document that you have retrieved is not helping the input document, rather degrading the performance, which means the model performs better when you don't have the Z value, which is this denominator. In that case, we get the negative value of this equation. And then of course you multiply by the probability of getting that particular Z value for a given X. Okay. Okay, so finally they talk about a couple of strategies that they use while pre-training the model. So the first one is salient span masking. So this idea is again similar to what Spanbird does, or other span masking pre-training schemes do. For example, if this is one of the sentence, they would mask out a couple of words based on the span length that you have. Let's say if it's two, then they might mask out this thing. And then you'll have to predict this based on all the words that are there in the sentence. So this kind of objective is seen to perform better compared to existing bird objective where you might mask out the entire word or maybe a part of just one word. But there's no notion of masking out contiguous span. So yeah, they use the same thing because the larger the window size that you have, which you're trying to mask out, it becomes harder for the model to get to the actual value. So yeah, that might be the reason that model learns more efficiently. So over here they use bird based NER model using which they kind of identify the named entities and dates and all of this stuff and they mask these specific things. Moving forward, the second is the null document. So it might be very possible that the document that you retrieve might not be necessary for answering a particular span in the query X. And query X itself is sufficient enough to answer that span. So to mimic that behavior, they add a null document on top of the K retrieved documents that you have so that if required, model might or might not want to attend to those extra documents and might attend to just itself. So yeah, this is the second one. The third strategy that they employ is prohibiting trivial retrievals. So under this, if the pre-training corpus, essentially with the domain specific corpus on which you're trying to train your language model and the knowledge corpus Z from where you kind of get your helper documents, if both are same, then it is highly possible that your theta model, which is the retriever part, will kind of sample a similar exact looking string from the Z distribution, which means now you have X and Z, which are exactly same. And since you have masked out a couple of words from X, so it's really easy for the model to exactly copy this piece of information and use that. So that's why they call it as a trivial retrieval because the information is readily available. So they make sure that they exclude such trivial candidates during pre-training. Okay. And the last part is initialization. So if you think like when we start doing this pre-training step, are both the models, which is embed input and embed doc, don't have any prior in terms of how to embed a given document due to which what will happen is this is input x this goes to retriever now retriever doesn't know how to retrieve things so let's say it retrieves any three random documents from z now you pair up x and z1 x and z2 all of these things this goes to the augmenter now if these z values are really bad augmenter might start neglecting the z values that you already have it will start predicting the masked values in x based on the context of X itself, because of which you'll have very low gradient flowing through the retriever model, because of which the retrieval model would never learn anything meaningful. Hence to avoid such cases, they already pre-train the embed input and embed doc models with a very simple pre-training objective, which is known as inverse closed task, where the idea is like, I'll give you a sentence. The model is trained to retrieve the document from which the sentence came from. So this way the model is essentially learning to get both the vectors close for the document as well as the query queue. The closer they get, the more the chances was retrieved from the document. So yeah, under this they train both these models and then start using this for the pre-training purposes. Okay. So yeah, I think now we are done with the paper. So if you like such content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also share it across with the friends to whosoever is interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.